Take two. I had such a hard time setting up today, I couldn't find the light. Find ding the light. I am an amateur photographer. That is something that you are always told to do is find the light. Oh, as a model too, as a cosplay model. And I was just like, here, 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 here. It's still not great. I wish I could face that way, but then you would see some stuff in my hallway that people can't see yet. Um, as I am wrapping presents and I'm using my craft table and there's stuff and I have stuff in my eye. There we go. Okay. Hey guys. So today I realized I missed Saturday and Sunday. Saturday we had a party and I was having a lot of fun and then pain hit so bad that I passed out. I took some naproxen and I took some um, Pepto-Bismol and some other stuff while I was there and it just didn't help. So I woke up and I was just like, oh great. Because I know I can feel it when I'm going down. I have that feeling and I'm just like okay not feeling thunk so that was fun so that was not a night to record things uh, although I do have a snippet of the table setting that my friend did she's so sweet and I love her to death and she throws a great party her and husband both and Thanks so much for them. They never make me feel as if I'm a freak or as if I'm an embarrassment, even though I feel like a freak and I feel like an embarrassment. They're always so encouraging and so loving and the perfect host and hostess. I love them to death. So there's that. And then Sunday I spent recuperating mostly sleeping until we did our D&D &D game at six because I thought it was going to start at 6, it was supposed to start at 5.30, so I was like 30 minutes late and then I had to change my macros on Rule 20 and everyone had to wait for me and it wasn't a fun time. But our encounter was fun because it was kind of like, it reminded me, oh, there we go again. I can't remember the name of something. It was like Shatter or Split or something with dimensions. Anyway, it was a game where you can be fighting a monster and all of a sudden reality splits and like more monsters come out or more um, terrain comes out or something like that. And we had a dimensional quake in our game and my character, my character is a puka, which means that she is a little small class creature and she is a griffin girl. She has little fuzzy kitty ears, little horns that go back, little white wings and a little black and blonde tail or black and white tail. And um, she has a little eye patch. She has like little patches on her fur. And so she's passing her checks and she's staying upright and I'm equivalenting it to like her wings are fluttering and her tail is like keeping her stable. And our other um, partner, party member, who is, oh, what is love? She is, I forget, but she's a, she's like a tiefling, uh, but there's another name for it, but she looks like a type, she basically looks like a demon, and she's normal class, so she, normal size, so, there's a part where she gets thrown up into the air and the only one that passes her check is my character, Rizvi, and I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? What can I do? So I, she has a high acrobatics and a high um, athletics check. So I was like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. She's gonna jump into the air, grab Lev by her hands, flip her over, and then Lev's gonna land on top of her, but when she flips her over, she's gonna jerk her 
So it's gonna, like, maximum impact not gonna happen. Well, the DM was like, that's anime as heck, let's do that. <laughs> like, okay. So, Resby doesn't pass her athletics check, so she doesn't get high enough to grab Lev. But she does pass her acrobatics check. Yeah, so she can get underneath her, and so Lev smashes on top of her. But Lev had had a lot of damage done to her by the dimensional quake before that. So, Riz and Rizvi hadn't had any damage done to her at all. So, it was, it was, it was better for Lev <laughs> that she <laughs> fell on a puka <laughs> who went squeak <laughs> whenever he like smashed into her. But she only took a few amount of damage and, and Lev was alive so <laughs> it's fine I just saw like Rizvi's eyes like going <laughs> like out of her head and her little tail like straightening out like a little squeeze toy just like <laughs> when love fell on her but that's fine it's it's good it's good it's probably fine we all survived the encounter the elemental encounter so it's good so what I wanted to do today <laughs> Six minutes in, I still haven't gotten what I wanted to do. I wanted to do my November favorites because it's like the 17th and I haven't done that yet. So we did the monthly favorites. And I have some things here that I really want to show y'all. So let's get, let's get out of the, out of the, let's get the ethereal things out of the way is what I'm trying to say. The, the, the. <sighs> the ethereal things out of the way. So for November, there's a thing called NaNoWriMo, which is National Novel Writers Month. Writing month, right? Writers month. Writing month, where you're supposed to write uh, 50,000 words, 50,000 to 100,000 words, a novel, you know, national novel writing in a month and I love it. It's so motivating. There's so many forums. There's so many helpful people. The website's fantastic. Their shirt designs are always really cute and I'm a sucker for a shirt and I'm like, am I like tilting weirdly? That's the wrong, that's the wrong button. Oh no, that little bubble's like way on the other side. Let's fix that a little bit before I make one of y'all seasick. Let me fix this and I'll be back. So, National Novel Writers, National Novel Writers Month, NaNoWriMo is just easier to say. Um, I did not make it to 50,000. I have never made it to 50,000. I have made it to 25. I have made it to 35, but I have never made it to 50. And, um, I have a few novels in the works right now. So I was trying to work on them. And I also have a serial that is published, um, on Wix called Clockwork. And it's E.L. What is it? No, it's evclockwork.com. I was like, E-L. That's my middle name. It's evclockwork.com, and it's about a young girl named Esther who finds herself orphaned in high school. And when she returns to high school, there's some new kids there that, uh, or there's a new kid there that is very mysterious and oddly nice to her, even though she gets bullied a lot, which perpetuates the bullying. I have a lot of experience with bullying, unfortunately. And so some of the stories in there are personal experiences. Um, I do have uh, experience with ideations and suicide. It does touch on that. And it is also a urban fantasy. So there are fantastic creatures <laughs> in there. And a mystery as to why Holland is so odd and why Toby is so mean and why the girls dislike Esther and why Esther is suddenly seeing things and hearing things and having to go to therapy and being medicated. And it, it touches on a lot of those issues where you don't know if you're going crazy or not. 
and where reality is what something that you can choose to believe in or not or you can have faith that it's the way it is or you can have faith that is it is a way that is fantastical and mystical and magical so that's my little self plug for clockwork i also had a audiobook for it um a while ago but I had some very talented people working with me and I would love to pick it back up it would be great to do it again it was a lot of work it was a lot of work for everybody but everyone put in their 110 150 percent so it was really great so my favorite thing is NaNoWriMo and my own story I'm horrible I know so the next thing that I really loved about November was $10 t-shirts at Hot Topic did anyone else go nuts? I went crazy. I'm not wearing one right now, so I would show y'all, but y'all have already seen this one. I need to do laundry. Um, but I went insane buying t-shirts at Hot Topic because I went through my closet and since I'm on disability, I'm not in the corporate world anymore, so I don't need any of my more corporate button down, uh, what is it called, business, business business casual outfits and I also used to wear a double zero and a two and I do not wear that anymore and I don't think now being 36 that uh, I will ever get back down to that size so I took them to um, Goodwill um, which I usually don't do I usually go to my local uh, church and donate there because I know it'll circulate throughout the neighborhood. Um, but I was having a really bad flare in Goodwills, like right down the street. So I was like, okay, well, I need it. The stuff has been sitting there. I need to get rid of it. So let's get rid of it. So, let's, or let's donate it, not get rid of it, not throw it away, but donate it. And everything was in really good condition. And it'll make someone small be able to work in a corporate environment. <laughs> yay 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 why am I throwing signs anyway yay so the next thing I loved was Christmas shopping again shopping I love Christmas shopping I love shopping I love Christmas shopping I love giving gifts to people it's so much fun to me it's hard on that wallet so hard on that wallet but it's so much fun and I just, I love it. It's, it's my love language. I like to get people things that remind me of them. I am not connecting to my breath at all. Excuse me. <sighs> well, what's the next thing? Um, visiting with TC, who used to be in my uh, audiobook, and her house. Her house is so cute. I love her house. It's so precious. It has um, arches in it, which I love arches. I'm all, my, my house is from the 70s, so it has like squares everywhere. Squares and rectangles everywhere. Everything's really chopped up. And hers is just nice and flowing and it has arches and it's so friendly and I'm just like, I hate my house so much more now. But it's so cute. It was so great to catch up with her and her husband and see how she's faring with the baby, um, being pregnant. And the baby is, baby time is fast approaching because she's supposed to be due February 2nd. But they, her husband thinks it's going to be January. But... I think it's she's she's gonna wait till February, so we'll see. I think I she's gonna be an Aquarius. Aquarius. So let's see what else. Um, two things that I've been obsessed with and have I think they're about to end their their season is Bob's Burgers and South Park. I know hashtag cancel South Park is a thing and I know that the first episode of the new season was very controversial controversial yes 
but that South Park, guys, I mean, that it that's nothing new. Like, if you're surprised or offended, I'm surprised you haven't been offended before because there's stuff that there's stuff that I don't even like in there. There's episodes that I find things that are funny in the South Park episode, but the episode overall I don't like. Like the um well, I don't I don't want to give anything away. There's something on this. Why are you on get off my snowflake? I don't want to give anything away. But there there are episodes that I'm like, um oh, cringe. Oh gosh. And then there's other episodes where I'm on the floor laughing. So uh, And there's debate whether Trey Parker wants to keep doing it and if hashtag cancel South Park's an actual thing. And then the last episode that they did, which I think was a season finale, they kind of hit on in a very clever way. Like, does this, do we need to keep doing the same thing over and over and keep being more and more ridiculous? And does this need to happen? And is this too too much but they were talking about a bike race a bike parade instead of the instead of the show which uh, you could equate it back to the show and then at the end of the show it said hashtag cancel south park i hope they never cancel south park i love it i don't know where they're gonna go i don't know what they're gonna do but i love it you guys i it is my guilty pleasure I know people find it offensive and disgusting and cancel South Park was like realistically trending, like not funny, not haha -ha, cancel South Park, but hashtag cancel South Park for real, it sucked, blah, 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 blah. I, it, it was cringy for me the first episode and I'm playing with something, but because, um, It deals, okay, spoiler alert. It deals with a school shooting. And a couple of the episodes after that, there's school shooting like in the background. And what I thought was good about it was that I think it's it was something that started a conversation if you saw it. And the way that Randy's wife, I can't remember her name, her reaction, Sharon, her reaction to it and everyone else's reaction to it, that dichotomy of environmental triggers that don't really resonate, I guess, with or that resonate with different people in different ways the dichotomy that resonates with different people with different ways or there's there's two two ways that the dichotomy i'm trying to use dichotomy in a way that i that makes sense because i said dichotomy now i have to make it make sense um the dichotomy of this is the way some people react and then this is the way other people react brought that to the forefront and i think that that was a good a good way to start a conversation at least there was a conversation about it in my house for a while like we we brought it up for a while um but at the same time this year one of my friends survived a school shooting um he witnessed someone go down and he got students into a some sort of closet and told people to, to be quiet and to like text, you know, for help and text that we're here. And a SWAT team actually found them and let them out. So when he asked me what I thought about the new season and what I thought about the first episode, because he hadn't seen it yet, I was like, well, um, I don't know if it would be triggering for you because it starts out with a school shooting. 
and we'll have to he'll have to make that decision whether he wants to watch it or not but oh, I didn't mean to get off on a tangent on South Park I know that that's can be a very touchy subject <laughs> it's like you don't talk about God uh, politics or South Park <laughs> so just, just, no. Um, Bob's Burgers season has been fantastic. I love it so much. I I I need to watch it again because I, I I love the first couple seasons so much and I I listen to them whenever I fall asleep. Um, but I love this this season and I'm so sad that it's about to be over. But um, what is his name? John H. Benjamin, H. John, ben H. John Benjamin, something like that, Archer, Bob, I adore him, I love him so much, I have his audiobook, um, Failure's an Option, I need to listen to it, I do need to get the actual physical book, I, because sometimes I, sometimes I like to listen and relax, but then other times I feel like I should be actively doing something, so like cleaning and listening, uh, listening, yeah, cleaning and listening to the audiobook or relaxing with the book on the couch. Depends on what I want to do. So, oh, we also watched The Haunting of Hill House. So good. You guys, really good. And, uh, HB had watched it before, I think. Or he had read about it before or watched it before and there's a lot of things going on in the background that if he hadn't told me about them I would have missed them so if you watch it watch it carefully because there's a lot of stuff going on in the background that is super creepy but it's really good it's not that violent and it's not gory which I don't I like suspense ghost stories and, and scary stories well then scary I guess but not horror I'm not into the horror horror I like suspense and mystery and intrigue and with my ghost stories like with horror I like more I don't like gore, I don't like torture porn, I don't want any animals to get hurt if there or if there's a rape scene. Like if there are any animals that get hurt, if there's massive child abuse, and if there's a rape scene, I won't see it. I just it's too triggering, I'm not gonna see it. But House on Haunted Hill or Haunting Haunting of Hill House. House on Haunted Hill is a different thing. Haunting of Hill House, very good. The way they go through each character is really good. Not everything is super, super interesting. I did get bored at some times, but push through. When you find out what happens to certain characters and the way that it unfolds, the storytelling is really, really good. Like some, some bits are more interesting than others, but that's, you know, life. But the storytelling and then how it, like, how it is all brought together at the end, really good. Uh, I did... I did predict the ending and HB was really annoyed with me. I was like, oh, this is what's going to happen. And it was like five minutes before they gave you the clue that it was going to happen. And he was like, why you got to be this way? I'm like, I'm sorry. That's the way I would write it. You know, that's, I'm a writer. I mean, that's the way I would do it. So we're also watching The Good Place. <laughs> that it's, it's. It's good. Like, it's not something I can binge. It is one of my favorite November things, but it's not something that I can binge because it's so wacky. <laughs> like, not cartoony wacky, but just, like, so, like, suspend your reality, I guess, for a little bit. And there's some plot holes in it that, um, or maybe they're not plot holes. Maybe they're going to all come together. But it, it the reasons why they are where they are and what's going on with them there's two characters that I don't believe that they should be going through what they're going through because of reasons that don't really match up with the reasons that the other characters really truly should be there 
And then the, then I'm trying to like get my point across without giving it away because there it's, it's like the whole encapsulation of the first couple episodes is setting you up for the rest of the show. So it's really hard to talk about anything that happens because it'll, it'll make a departure into what is actually happening in the show. So let's see. I got all that, I got all that, I got all that. Oh, that was loud. So I saw this on Miss Monster. Uh, if you don't know who um, Miss Monster is, look her up. She does these wonderful food dogs and these creatures. Uh, she makes herself into monsters. She's amazing. And I got this from her. It is a food dog ring. If you can tell, it has its little. Is it focusing? Teeth. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that just so cool? And what's even cooler is that. Uh, I told HB, I was like, oh my god, look at this ring. I, he knows I love Miss Monster so much. I have a lot of her plushies. And uh, he was like, oh yeah, what, what size are you? And I was like, seven. And he's like, okay, it'll be here Monday. And I'm like, oh my god, what? <laughs> he spoils me so much. I love him so much. He's so sweet. Of course, he thought it was pretty badass too. And um, her designs, I really wanted, back when I discovered her, she was doing a lot of gauche paintings are using gauche to paint I guess is what I should say and she did these two food dogs and one was red and one was blue like a teal and they were from the side and they were facing each other and I wanted to get them on my forearm so bad I wanted them tattooed on me because they were gorgeous and gauche painting if you don't know I still can't breathe <sighs> is kind of like water painting, or water painting, watercolor, but I think it's thicker than watercolor. I think that's the difference. It's a French French way of using watercolor or French um, type of watercolor. So, Miss Monster, check her out. She's amazing. Um, I forget what she is on Twitter, but just look at Miss Monster on Cartel and you'll be able to find her. And then, I know I've been talking about this a lot. I got my snowflake from, I'm going to say this wrong, Dulce Calavertias. Isn't it adorable? Look at the spider in the middle and all the little zeros. I love it so much. It's so awesome. Like... It's, I just, I just stare at it off to the distance, just, oh, so I will put her name down below. I think she still has some available, though right now they probably won't get here in time for Christmas. I doubt it. I don't know. I don't know where she is, but yeah, Dulce Calavertias, Veritas, I'm sorry, Dulce, I can say Dulce. But that's it for my monthly favorites um, for November. <laughs> I was like, but I, ha I have more, but it's December, so I'll do that in January. And hopefully I will see you guys tomorrow, and I'll do better with this whole you just gesture to all of me kind of thing. Who else is so excited for How to Train Your Dragon? Okay, I'm really going to go. Bye!